All right, everyone, without any further ado, I'm going to introduce Pike from Logitech, and we're going to review today the Harmony Pro 2400. So, Pike, the floor is yours, my friend. Excellent. Well, I want to welcome everyone for attending. Um, I know we have a mixed audience, meaning I'm sure many of you have already been installing Harmony, or some of you may have tried it a long time ago. So we're definitely going to make sure that we can cater to everyone. Um, before we get into this, I will introduce myself. I'm going to really try to keep it brief because we have a lot to cover. Again, we want to talk about many pieces, not just um, the product, but kind of getting a, a better understanding on kind of how we go about programming macros and so forth. So my name is Pike. I've been with Harmony since 13 years. I'm going on my 14th uh, next uh, month. So very excited to hit that milestone. And I've been with Logitech the whole time in the Harmony BG. I started in customer service and kind of grown from there into different departments. So just to keep it more brief, um, I've been in uh, QA, so I worked on many software features. I've worked with the firmware team. Um, nowadays, I'm focused on the pro channel, but I still wear kind of my QA hat where, you know, I help the team with kind of developing pieces. I'm also a partial product owner of the pro portal that we'll be talking about and I was uh, heavily involved in, of course, the pro 2400. So basically, I wear many hats, but part of my role is also really um, training installers, hosting webinars, uh, training our distributors, and, and really getting to know this industry. So I've been doing this for uh, since 2016, since we launched the Harmony Pro, and, and now very excited to have you guys here to really see how you know how far we've come. We've now really built a product based on a lot of feedback from installers, kind of tackling a lot of these uh, pain points and just create a product specifically designed uh, for this channel. So we're gonna go ahead and cover that. So let's get into the agenda here. So before I dive into the actual product, again, because we have a mixed audience, I wanna make sure that everyone understands kind of how our system works and, and really the value of um, programming Harmony Remotes. Now, again, some of you have been doing it for a long time. I think there's still a lot of um, little uh, Tim bits you can pick up on. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Okay, so now how this is how it works. So again, anyone can really benefit from that. So we're going to talk about the Harmony programming benefits and the benefits to you and kind of how it all ticks together. I think it really is important to understand that value uh, proposition. And that's what we're going to cover again at the end as well. Um, after that, of course, we're going to really dive into the Harmony Pro 2400. I'm actually um, Looking at bandwidth, we're gonna actually see if we can actually turn on the webcam during this webinar and actually do an unboxing. I got the product right here. I kinda of wanna give you kind of an unboxing experience as we talk about the product features. Now, another core piece to um, the Pro 2400 and installers in general is we actually have a Pro portal. Now think of it as kind of oversee. It allows you to um, actually provide a much better setup for your inst uh, clients and we'll, we'll get into the details for that but it also allows you to manage your clients and more important manage them remotely so definitely going to encourage everyone who doesn't have an account to sign up again you don't need to own a harmony or have purchased one you can take the free training courses there as well so we'll dive into that as well and the benefits and then we're going to kind of tidy it up um, by kind of revisiting the harmony value proposition as a whole and of course i definitely want to get to your questions again i know we have a you know a hard stop at one, uh, for an hour but i will continue um, staying online to make sure every question has been answered because at the end of the day we want to make sure that you walk away with this uh, learning the most of the product and the setup and then providing the best um, installation for your clients so with that let's talk about the harmony control and and the setup piece so it's it's a journey that um, is you know of course there is a customer journey where they're actually utilizing the remote as controlling their entertainment and the way we go about it for the customer part is we kind of create the macro and it's created for you and the customer now I just want to be very clear it doesn't mean you can't do advanced programming and we'll get into that you can do a lot of extra building to that macro or modified basically to the customer what it means is they just press watch tv we're going to automatically power on the tv 
the cable box, the sound bar, or the AVR, we're going to automatically calculate the appropriate time required for each and every device. And that's something that we do on the back end, so you don't have to put these values in. And what it means is customer just presses the button and the activity just works, and it needs to work, because it's very important that that data is critical. Because without that, of course, you're not going to get a picture or sound for that matter. So that really is what we call activities. You know, some call it scenes or routines. We are an activity-based remote. We really want to make sure that the customer just presses one button to enjoy their entertainment. May that be um, watching TV or one of their Sonos favorite playlists or uh, playing Xbox. Now, it works in, in a way that um, we want to make sure that Harmony programs this macro for you so you don't spend a ton of time building this from scratch. Again, we um, want to make sure that we, we provide you with that journey and make this much, much easier. So what it comes down to, really, to build a macro like Watch TV, you select your devices. And again, we already recommend, well, most likely, um, these are the devices that you have in your account. We're going to automatically then select already the devices most likely uh, that will be used for Watch TV. Of course, you can select and unselect. Again, any little piece that we can optimize is going to save you time, which in the end saves money. So you select the devices. The only question that we're really going to ask you is what inputs are the devices connected to? Once you select the inputs, we actually automatically fire them. So that way you can also verify that you've wired it correctly or that the HDMI cable is plugged in correctly. So as soon as you hit HDMI 2, we actually fire that right away. And AV2 for the Yamaha, for instance. Now, that's basically it. So you basically select the devices, select the input, and you have your macro. What does it mean? You can build that macro in two or less minutes, you know, two minutes, um, most time, in maybe even one minute. So the value there is you can easily get these macros created in, in a matter of minutes. And that, that's, again, allows you to really get this set up on the go without spending hours on, on programming a remote. So that journey for the installer, it begins at the pro portal. And we'll dig into the benefits, why you want to always start with a pro portal. And this is something I'm still coaching, training, preaching, or however you want to call it, many installers that have been doing Harmony for a while because they're so used to setting it up as a consumer, which we really want them to set it up as an installer. And we've added some really nice new improvements to really reap in the benefits of setting it up through the pro portal. And that's something we'll, we'll dig into a little bit later. But basically, once you're in the pro portal, you add your client, you set up their email, and then you add the devices. Now, even the devices, like that list that I showed, many devices we automatically discover. So you don't have to even enter the model number of the TV or um, your Sonos or your Dish Hopper. We discover those uh, devices, so it saves you, again, time. The faster you can get to programming this remote, of course, the better, because we know that you're installing not just a remote, most likely, you're probably running speaker wire or mounting a TV and, and so forth. You have all these other jobs in the household, right? So we wanna make sure you kind of get this wrapped up. So once you've added the devices, again, you're building these macros. And when you build the macros, what we're also doing, because again, you're multitasking, you're doing many things, you may overlook something like, oh, I forgot to build this macro. Well, we're trying to think with you, again, We've done this for a long time, and we understand based on the devices that you have in your account, we're already going to recommend specific activity macros. So if you add a Roku, we're going to already suggest a Roku activity and a Netflix, so we can launch the Netflix on the Roku. And the same thing if you have an Apple TV, we're going to recommend that Apple TV activity. Again, selecting these pre the fine macros just makes things faster, smoother, and you don't have to worry that you might have forgotten to build a specific macro for the customer. And then the last step is basically putting in, if they're using, uh, you know, unless they're a cable cutter, but the majority, and especially in this uh, channel, still uses TV, especially for sports, you put in the zip code and we automatically find the TV providers in that specific area. So if it's Comcast in an area or Dish or DirecTV, you select that and we automatically populate all the favorite channels. And you can um, either add the automatic most popular ones or you can select or 
um, unselect specific favorites. You can search for them as well. And again, this is data from Rovi, you know, who purchased TiVo. So, so they're constantly monitoring that and building this, this channel database for providers. Again, we want to make sure that you can set up 50 favorite channels in a matter of minutes for your customer. And what it comes down to is by programming a remote, five steps, you're done. You can do this in 25 minutes or less. Again, one of the big value propositions of Harmony is because we do this, and some may say, well, it's wizard-based. Yeah, it's a smart wizard. It's a smart macro, which we'll get into that. And it's done by design, and it's a good thing because it allows you to seamlessly set up these macros in a matter of minutes. And we'll get into kind of the macro itself. Again, if you go through some of these forms like Remote Central, they say, you know, they quickly may judge, oh, because it's wizard, I can't do anything. Well, that's completely untrue. You can actually modify a lot of these activity macros if need be. Now, the truth is a lot of times you don't need to modify. You don't have an HDMI handshake issue. Again, they, you may have, but again, newer devices don't have it as frequently. But again, we want to make sure that these advanced programming pieces are uh, done after you've built kind of your basic uh, macros that you're going to use. Again, we're not going to do that in the initial setup because it doesn't always apply for every job. So why not make sure that we can get a nice setup that you can then test out and then for these odd scenarios where you want to do some advanced programming and again, not very common, you can definitely go ahead and revisit the macro. So basically, um, the value here is you can set up this full product in less than 30 minutes. Right? Really, it comes down to 25 minutes. And, and the value that um, we see in the feedback we're getting is a lot of installers that decided to try out Harmony. Um, the first thing that they tell me when I talk to them on the phone or a trade show or a webinar is not, um, they're not even talking about the product first. The first thing they mention is, I can't believe I was able to set up a whole system in 25 minutes or less. Because just before, because it took you 25 minutes doesn't mean that you're going to, um, you know, charge a service for 25 minutes. You charge for the installation, right? So that, that's where the value really is, is, is getting that product set up in, in, in a very short time. So um, I do want to just talk about advanced customization. So after you've programmed these macros and you've done that first uh, initial config, you can then do all kinds of additional things. Like maybe you want to turn on the AVR before the TV. Again, by default, we're going to always turn on the device that takes the longest. So the projector will always be powered on first or a TV because an AVR only needs two seconds or maybe five seconds. So Again, that's something that we have by default, but it can definitely be changed. You can even do advanced button programming. So we have, for instance, a long press feature. Now you wanna keep the volume, of course, as is, because you want a short or long press. But menu, you can, for instance, put a long press where the menu may go into a deep settings menu or a quick menu. So that way you have a multifunctional button. So again, that's a great advanced feature. Um, another advanced feature is, of course, when you transition from one activity to another, we're going to turn off the devices that we're not using because that's usually the common ask. Like if I'm, you know, I'm not using it, I want to now use um, different devices. I'm just going to power off the devices that are not being used. But there are, of course, exceptions. Sometimes the customer um, may, may be playing an Xbox game, you know, Call of Duty, and now they want to watch baseball, but they don't want to turn off their game because it's not saved or whatever. So you can actually tell the Xbox, you know what, I want you to stay on between activity transitions, but when I hit the off button, turn it off. So if I go from Xbox to watch TV, it's going to stay on, not until I hit the off button on the top of the remote. So again, these are just a couple of examples that we have of advanced programming. I'll just make sure that everyone is aware that, yes, you can do a lot of modification to the actual config. Now, what's very important to building these macros is because our macros are, I want to be very clear, they're not dumb macros. We don't just send a bunch of IR commands. That, that just would not work. We need to understand many different device attributes. Things from how long does it take to turn on the TV? How many inputs? Does it, do discrete commands work? Um, if I send an IR command and I'm not using emitters, like I'm just using blasters, um, 
how long is the timeout? Meaning if I send the command to the cable box, how quick will the TV respond again? Because they all see those commands. So those things are called inter-device delay. Again, not something that everyone needs to know. That's really for our database team. That being said, any of these device features can also be modified by yourself as well. But again, for the majority, that's not required because it's our job to make sure that that data works. Because when it comes to our data, we're getting feedback from customer support. So if you call the dealer hotline and there is something wrong with the device, meaning maybe it's not in our database, which is really rare, or we're missing an input, or it needs a longer time to start up. Again, if we do identify that um, it needs a small change or a big change, we'll fix it for you on the account, but we'll also make sure that the database team fixes it. What it means is the next time you're on the job with that same device, you no longer have that issue because we've already added a new version of that device. So, and that's been happening since 2001. Our de device database got online in 2001, believe it or not. We were already cloud-based back then. And we've been reaping the benefits on that because since then we've generated over 8 million Harmony customers. So we can do crowdsourcing. We can look at if someone, without contacting us, if someone is learning a command that's not in our database, we can then get a flag and an analyst can add that. And this is done by 10 dedicated device team analysts. This is what makes our database so efficient. It, it's not really about like, there's many companies out there that state, oh, we can control this many devices. That, that, that's meaningless to me. What, what mean, the value of it is how do you control it? Like, we, we even look at, you know, if I sent OK for a, a cable box, I might get to the favorite channel quicker. Again, it doesn't work for every favorite uh, cable box, but we test that. We want to always optimize as much as we can. And then, as I mentioned, myself, I'm also still involved kind of in our database team. So I still, on a quarterly basis, do store visits where I write white papers and I do testing because there's all kinds of strange stuff out there with some smart TVs. They've gotten a lot better, but a couple of years, for instance, Netflix wouldn't respond to discrete commands on Samsung in back in 2014. I mean, this is a while ago, but just shows you there's different things out in the field that we need to tackle. Bottom line is we are responsible for having this data accurate in our database because we have also these 8 million customers that are kind of DIYers and it, it better work because without this data, macro is not going to work efficient. And that macro is, is driven by data, but it's also smart. It's not a dumb macro. What does it mean? Well, if I go from watch TV to Xbox, the Harmony already knows that the TV is already on, so it's not going to add additional delays. It's going to instantly switch to the input. And it's the same thing with the AVR, right? It's not going to wait for the AVR to warm up. No, it's going to instantly switch to the input. So that makes the macro a lot more dynamic, and it, it just looks at the environment it, when it goes from A to B. It just becomes a lot more efficient. Now, again, of, you know, we looked at numbers, 8 million customers, only 2% learn. It, it's very rare. Uh, the most time, the most use cases I see is where an installer may have a customer that bought a light strip that, you know, some kind of Chinese knockoff brand light strip and the customer just wants to control it or um, an IR candle, which we actually have many. But, um, you know, there's some of these kind of odd brands. You can definitely learn commands to our hub. So it has a learning port. Uh, right on the hub there. You just basically press and release and we capture it. Now, instead of learning the 20 commands on the remote, which again takes time, right? We want to save you that time. So um, it is possible if you really want to learn all the commands, but what we're going to do is we're going to analyze the first three commands and match that to the most appropriate language. I mean, we have more than 20,000 different IR languages in our database. So most likely we'll find something that is very close to save you kind of having to learn all the commands. So our hub-based products, like we have a very wide line of Harmony and, and today we're gonna focus on the Pro 2400, but before we get to kind of the unboxing and that piece of the webinar, I wanna also under, uh, explain the whole Harmony ecosystem and we have some of these products out there that are IR only. I'm not really gonna cover those because they're not really designed for this channel because the customer has to aim the remote, you can't hide anything in a cabinet, it, it has to be in the same room. There, there's a lot of drawbacks. So what I wanna talk about is the technology in our hub-based product. So once everyone kind of sees 
what we can do, that way we can dive into the Pro 2400 and, and better understand that product. But what I'm gonna cover now is basically something that's supported by, of course, all Harmony products that come equipped with a hub. So you can see there's two different hubs, of course. There's kind of the classic hub, and then there is the new hub that we've designed, which is tied into the Pro 2400 remote. So that's the um, really the hub for this channel. And we'll, um, we'll get to that soon. So when it comes to control, these hub-based products, of course, they can do IR, but they also can do uh, IP. So for IP, again, we're not controlling everything of, with IP. You know, we're getting a lot of requests and feedback. This webinar, we, we are not going to really discuss roadmap. Like, we're going to answer questions, but I can't answer questions on when are we going to do this IP integration and so forth. You know, as we see that the Pro 2400 is, is getting some lift and, and is generating lots of sales, that's going to, of course, kind of shake things up where, hey, it looks like there, there's, you know, a lot of demand for this. And so let's see if we can kind of expand on compatibility. So IP control, we do uh, a great job with Dish. Uh, Roku, we can launch the, uh, the apps. We have IP control for Sony TV. Uh, Denon Heos and Sonos uh, has a great experience and we'll dive into that a little bit more as well. And then we have Bluetooth. So for Bluetooth, we can control a Fire TV. A lot of these devices don't even have an IR port. So it's a great way of controlling, you know, an NVIDIA Shield or a home theater PC with, with Kodi or Plex where we have specific profiles for. And of course, not just entertainment, also, when it comes to home control, because we have you know these hub-based products that um, can tie into different APIs because they're you know they're cloud-based as well. Of course, they download a local local config you know for all the IR devices, but then a lot of devices then can be controlled through an API. So we have a great integration with Lutron. We support Caseta, but also Raw to Select, which is really more designed for this channel. Um, August we work with and then Samsung SmartThings, which is uh, SmartThings be, uh, gives you that bridge to controlling Z-Wave and Zigbee devices as well. And then uh, Hunter Douglas uh, window shades uh, we control, um, LifeX, Philips U. Again, not all these are, are carried by distributors, but it's important just to see what products we are compatible with, of course. Now let's get to um, unboxing the Harmony Pro 2400. And now with that, I'm just gonna have to make a couple changes here in this room. Gonna make sure that my camera is uh, set up properly and that we can get started. And I'm gonna make sure that we change the lighting a little bit here. Just bear with me for a minute while I get this um, going. Rick, are there any questions while we get this uh, up and running? No, okay, I think we're good. Yeah, we have we have some questions that popped up, and also I wanted to say, um, if anyone has any questions during the course of the presentation, please feel free to type them into the questions tab. You'll see the questions tab in the dashboard on the right hand side of your screen. Um, let me see. We're getting some questions about database since we've been talking database. Yeah. Okay. So the first one that comes up is Xfinity, the Xfinity box. And then also um, we noted um, Dish Network. So the other obvious one that comes up is DirecTV. So I think Comcast and DirecTV are like the two more popular ones that we don't currently do IP control. Yeah, correct. Yeah, DirecTV does have uh, IP control. I'm not sure if Comcast shares that at this point. It's definitely something that um, we've heard feedback before. What we're going to do is as we're rolling out this product, we're going to really analyze also. And this is where it's very important to use the pro portal where we're going to see how many installers are really tying that into DirecTV. And if we definitely see you know, a lot of um, connections with that, it's going to basically make that use case that much stronger to start tying that in, into uh, IP control uh, compared to IR. So that's that's definitely something, again, I can't really talk about commitments or, or so forth, but it's definitely something that, that's on our radar. So very, very good question. And so Comcast, that, that's a... Um, 
one that might be a little bit more challenging and we'll have to see how they're gonna start opening up the the control on their end okay perfect all right and then <clears throat> let me see um samsung tvs sony tvs these are the two most popular ones that are popping up here we are getting a lot yeah. of stuff pop up here um and then um ip control uh, various projectors, things like that. So I think I just kind of broadening the IP control is kind of the general consensus. Yeah. And um, so what I what I would really like, and that's what I tell a lot of installers. So again, I have my top five, right, of what we need to do on our roadmap. And in that top five, uh, LG and Samsung are are on the top to do at least the IP control for TVs because we understand the uh, the pain point of running an IR emitter there. So that's something definitely um, that I'm gonna on my end, you know, try to recommend as something we should we should look into. Right now we have a, a couple of other things on our roadmap that, that just have a a bit of a higher uh, priority, but definitely something we want to see more. We might also be running a survey to really, um, you know, have installers involved with kind of you know decision making in our in our roadmap and we've had this with the hardware we had a lot of installers involved with kind of the hardware on this this is really driven by installers this product to be to be quite honest and we need to do the same thing for our integrations make sure that we really listen to this channel and look at um, what's going to help drive more sales and provide the best service for their customers so great questions um, another thing is if you really want to share um, the, the importance to you for IP control on the pro portal, we'll get into that. We have a dealer form. I monitor that. And a lot of that feedback that I get, I send directly to our senior director at Harmony. So he sees your voice. If you really want to be heard, that's really the channel of, of where to go and, and start the conversation. So I'll, I'll be covering that as well. So uh, again, great question. I'm going to try to stop sharing my screen now, Rick, and then turn okay. on my my camera so again this All is right. the, um and then here's another low-hanging one because i know the answer so okay. sean is asking about legacy rs-232 devices and we just simply don't have serial drivers or the ability to support serial drivers in this no program. no it's uh the priority is really gonna be on on doing more ip control um okay. yeah all right I, I, again, I know some uh, some manufacturers do, but they play in a di complete different price point, a different different uh, you know space. Again, yeah. the, the, you know when we look at this product, this is a lot yeah. of bang for the buck when it comes to you're looking at a product that is going to fit a much larger audience. The MSRP on this is five forty nine, and they're just quite frankly not. And we'll we'll get into that. Um, product out there that can that has that value proposition at that price point so um, okay. I'm gonna move my mic a little bit sorry I just uh, want to make sure that everyone can see there we go forgot how messy my table is with all my uh, gadgets <laughs> okay all right let's get to the unboxing right. and right. yeah we got, so we got we'll we'll table the questions let's table the questions and we'll go ahead and let you do your Perfect, perfect. And we'll get back. Okay, thanks. Yeah. yeah, so let's do the unboxing and then we're going to continue with the questions. Again, I love questions. It's a learning opportunity for me and, you know, I'm, I'm the internal voice of the installer. So, uh, okay, so as you can see here, the brand new Pro 2400 that we're going to unbox, uh, it has been unboxed before, but I try to put it back as clean as possible. So you can see some of you that might be familiar to our current lineup, the Pro had a really a cardboard packaging. When we got into this channel, we saw a lot of products that just had a you know cardboard packaging. But what we see is there's just a lot of demand kind of more for a, a color, more kind of retail focused packaging. Because a lot of times you bring this to the customer, you wanna, you know, they get excited about the product just so they can see the value. What's interesting though. I say retail theme, we really focus on really the installer and, and really show the value propositions to the installer here on the front of the box. We also decided to show the back of the product, just like an AV rack. That's really where, you know, everything's happening. That's really what you want to see, kind of how does it all tie in on, on the back side of it. So this is the front of the packaging. 
then um, on the side it basically that's basically kind of what it's designed for and then we make sure that we also show you kind of all the kind of features it has we also talk now about the pro portal because we feel this is a very important tool for installers so just creating a little bit more awareness of that so this is kind of the back of the product now let's see what's inside So the first thing that we see is the hub, and that's really the start of the show. The hub has really been kind of redesigned to really cater to a lot of these um, needs for the installer, quite frankly. So let's go ahead and you know take out the hub, and we'll get into all the features that uh, the new hub now provides. Now, what you also see, and we'll talk about this, there's there's another accessory here for the hub, and we'll uh, we'll cover that uh, in a second as well. And then the second layer, here we have, of course, the Pro 2400. We have the cradle in there, um, the IR emitters, and then underneath the QSG, we tucked away um, the let's see here i can see it a little bit better we tucked away the uh, ir boots so it comes with these boots so let's go ahead and just take out the ir emitter so these are single head ir emitters i'm gonna take those out and what's in there too actually what i uh i forgot to mention we support mono i know they show that they look like stereo but they they work on a model cable so these uh, this is a male-to-male -male cable as well handy for an avr for instance and of course, we have our two AC adapters. Now, what you see is that there's definitely a size difference, um, and that's because the um, power for the hub is just uh, it requires a little bit more than the charging cradle, and they're definitely marked as well. There we go. Now, the cradle, you might see here, there's an arrow here. Um, and the reason why is that we make sure it's really pressure fit. So again, when it's you know on the truck or on the container, it's not going to rock around. So you basically um, twist it to the left, and then it just comes comes right out. So now, uh, and then of course you take out the plastic, and then the remote is is you know kind of pressure fit in there. You just basically take it around the sides, and it comes right out. There we go. And then we have one more emitter. Perfect. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit there more. There we go. Let's bring this a little bit to the front. So let's first, um, before we get into Fool of the Hub, I'm going to show you the remote here. Now, to some of you that have already been installing Harmony remotes may think, well, this looks just like the Harmony Pro. And you are correct when it comes to the outside, but again, never judge a book by its cover. And, uh, you know, it's what's inside that matters. And that's what we've done. So the inside of the remote um, has doubled the amount of memory. It supports up to 30 AV devices. When it comes to home control, we're not going to count individual devices. So if you tie it into Lutron, it's one system. Sonos is one system, even though you have 30 speakers. But when it comes to your conventional AV, it can support up to 30 devices. Because we've doubled the memory from 64 to 128 megs, it also handles a larger activity configurations much better. Now, what's really changed in this remote is really the RF communication. So just to those uh, who are new to Harmony or some, again, I still get this question from uh, installers that have been installing Harmony and just weren't aware. So the communication between the remote and the hub uses RF technology. And it's not just um, a 2.4 gigahertz RF, that's the frequency, but it's proprietary RF technology designed by Logitech to really work with interference. And this is the same technology that's quite frankly in our keyboards, in our mice, um, it also adjusts the actual channel on its own. So if there's interference, it actually switches the channel. Now that technology is also on our current hub, but we've modified the version um, of the uh, technology that's being used. So the RF modulation 
is changed and that really allows to significantly increase the range between the remote and the hub and that's why what you see here this is not a wi-fi antenna this is an antenna that is uh, used to communicate at a far greater distance between a remote and the hub so it's an rf antenna and with the conventional antenna the antenna that comes with the unit you can now get a range of um, up to 100 feet so that's a significant improvement where again of course environment plays a role but our classic conventional hubs were more in the range of 30 to 40 feet again sometimes there is more interference so you may only get up to 20 feet so this is a product that really designs with the installer in mind where they can push um, the boundaries much further because a lot of times the products are just simply not in the same room so it's up to 100 feet again we're not going to overestimate we, we try to stay somewhat conventional i've had beta testers that told me pike i'm outside my house and i can still control everything inside and i'm 150 feet away so again each environment is different so do keep that in mind but there is also something that we decided to do to kind of give you a little bit more flexibility for those scenarios where you really need to push it to the limit so with that i'm now that we talked about the remote i'm just going to put the remote over here for a second and let's have a look here so this antenna can actually be removed as you can see here it's a standard SMA antenna. I'm just gonna see if I can change, adjust the lighting slightly so we can, sorry about that, see a little bit better. There we go. So this is, yeah, a standard SMA antenna. So you can do something like this. Now we're not in the RF accessory business, but you know, we do know that there are accessories out there. Make sure it's in the camera. So an accessory like this, I mean, get paid like ten dollars for this. This is just one. I've I've also bought one that we had at Cedia with a much longer cable. As you can see now, I, I can actually place the antenna outside the rack. So again, it gives you more flexibility on range. So this was again. A, a big piece of designing this product and then you know we see a lot of a lot of installers are very excited I just did an expo at the MRI in, in Springfield and that's exactly what the installer told me this is exactly the one you know he had a couple of jobs where he couldn't he wanted to put in harmony but it just couldn't because of the range limitation and it, it, that's what solves that now of course we've done a lot more so let's let's talk about what else we've done um, let's get this mystery out of the way. So these are actually screws and plugs, and um, it just allows you to also be able to mount it. You know, uh, ceiling mounted or in the, you know on the side of a cabinet. It just gives you that extra flexibility uh, on there. Um, uh, since we're covering the back, if you plug in several units, what we've also done during setup, because again each one belongs to a specific room. Um, the setup will then list um, the hubs that are in a new setup mode, and you can actually determine which one is what by the MAC address. So we identify that. So let's uh, let's take a closer peek to the back of the hub. I'm just going to go ahead and um, change the zooming here. Just bear with me for a second, just so we can get a little bit more lighting. Just gonna wait for the focus. Let's see here. There we go. Now I just gotta make sure I don't move myself. So what do we have here? Well, of course we have the um, standard reset button. If you ever want to erase the config, you know we kept that on. But brand new on this is a Ethernet port. Now I'm gonna show you something cool. It's not just an Ethernet port. Just bear with me for a second. I'm a strong believer of seeing is believing. So I ran a very long cable. Check this out. I'll plug this guy in. Now you may have noticed I didn't plug in the AC adapter because we made the ethernet connection, not just ethernet. It actually is ethernet POE. 
NPOE plus. So um, on certain jobs, you may not even need to use the power. Again, if it's a standard ethernet with no PoE switch, then of course you can use the power. But if you have a PoE switch, you can uh, save yourself running another wire. So it's again, another great feature. Now I wanna talk about another cool feature that we've done. So we all know when you're out in the field, the one pain, uh, painful thing is firmware. Everything needs a firmware, the smart TV, the, the speakers, the bridges, uh, it goes on and on. We need firmware too, we can't get away from that. But what we've done is when you purchase this product, we recommend buying the product, you know, not the day that you go out on the job, maybe buy the day before. Now, all you need to do is exactly what I've done here, take it out of the box, basically plug it in, make sure that the cradle is so of course also you know plugged in so on the, on the back here that's plugged in now what's going to happen is it's going to automatically download the firmware on the hub and that takes only like six minutes even when it's six to eight, ten minutes again when you're on the job you might see that it takes about anywhere six to ten minutes what we don't tell you is we actually don't install the firmware on the remote because that takes an hour because it's done through rf what we do is we do that at 3 a.m. at night. But what's great about this feature is when you plug it in before you go to the job site, we automatically install the firmware, no, no software setup required. As soon as you plug it in and that's internet, it downloads it, and then it's gonna automatically, uh, within 45 to 55 minutes, install the firmware on the remote as well. Now, when we roll this out, there's no indication, but we're gonna roll out a new firmware in the factory where you know, say come January, the newer ones will actually show on the screen that it's successfully installed the firmware. Um, but again, trust me on that one. I've done this many, many times. It installed, you just let it sit for an hour and it's done. So I'm just gonna take this out so we can just have a better view. So we covered ethernet, you know, we have of course the power source. And then we have, instead of two, so our classic hubs have two ports, we now added six and they are no longer 2.5, which again is a welcome change. We've now standardized them. They're 3.5, so you can also tie in a Zentech IR emitter with an IR flasher. So again, it gives you just a lot more flexibility. Now, when I unpacked, you may have noticed that we are actually including three, not six. So I wanna talk about that. There's, there's, a, there's a reason. Again, the feedback is many installers don't use all of them on a job. Again, if you're installing a Roku, you're using IP, Fire TV, Bluetooth. So a lot of these IR uh, uh, devices that we can actually control through IP, again, you don't need the wires or Bluetooth devices such as Fire TV. The other reason is some uh, prefer to use Zentech or third party. So the, what this means is by putting in less, we can reduce the cost of the product and we're now passing on that, that margin to you. Now we're not gonna talk about the margin specific, but the margin um, compared to the Harmony Pro has definitely um, increased. So there is definitely more margin on the product compared to the Harmony Pro or any other Harmony product. And we've made sure that we've passed that on uh, to installers. So that's, that's one benefit that we did. And then of course, a lot of times what we see is installers that where the jobs don't require as many, they just end up stockpiling them to begin with. So that's the reason why we've kind of included three so that kind of covers the, uh, the unboxing. We're gonna talk more about some of the features on this remote as well, but I'm just gonna go back to my slide deck for that. So just bear with me here as I kind of transition back to the slide deck here. Okay, and we're back to my screen.
So when it comes to getting to know the product a little bit more on your own or even uh, the customer, we've also published uh, several different uh, articles. And we have, of course, a specification page where we give you the full specs of the product from, you know, the POE, POE Plus. And that's all on the, on the specification page. You can, you know, it's a simple Harmony Pro 2400 specification and um, Google will bring that right up. Now, that gives you also the length, even the weight of the IR meters. It, it, it's a lot of kind of uh, details. Now, the other page, which is also something that is um, not just desktop, but mobile friendly, is our getting started with the Harmony Pro 2400. This is a great page for the installer. It's kind of a, a way of unboxing it online, but it's also great to even share with your customer because this article has been written in a way that a customer can understand it as well, but we constantly talk about the installer. So even if a customer lands on this page, they understand that this is a, um, a product um, that um, has to be installed by an installer, uh, for an installer, um, kind of designed to be installed and used by them. So that's, it, again, it's a great page for them to kind of understand and get to getting to know the product as well. So again, Harmony has many different remotes, but the, the remotes that really are gonna grow this channel, are gonna do more IP and, and so forth, are the pro channel remotes. And that's the Harmony Pro and the Pro 2400. So, you know, we covered the unboxing of the Pro 2400. You can see the differences also in, in the hub and of course, um, the amount of devices that it supports. Um, also, they also support multi-zone kind of the, now it's not a multi-room version of multi-zone, it's a multi-zone support for really allowing you to broadcast that same audio into the next room. So a lot of times, you know, someone's watching uh, the game on TV and they want to put the audio in the in the kitchen or in the patio. So we've simplified this. The only thing that the customer needs to do is, again, our remote is touch screen and we have several pages. So you just swipe to the right and it shows your zones. And instead of showing zone two or three, which is just complicated and they don't understand, they see kitchen or patio. They click on kitchen. We're gonna automatically turn on the secondary zone and set it to the same input so that it's broadcasting the, the same audio in that room. If they unselect it, we turn off the secondary zone. So we wanna make it very user friendly. So this is just kind of a high uh, list of uh, you know, the product features. And the, the other important significance is on the DIY products, you know, the Harmony Elite, Companion 655 and, and so forth, they come with one year warranty. We actually support two year warranty for these products for installers. So again, it's another benefit to these products and these products are not gonna be found on Best Buy or Amazon. So the, you know, we talked a lot significantly about the hub because the hub we really designed um, with the installer in mind, we've added a lot of improvements. And then of course we changed the internals on the remote. Again, because we have a mixed audience, I also just wanna talk about the benefits of the remote. So the remote actually also has an on remote IR sensor. Now we disabled that by default because anytime you can avoid having to aim the remote, it's a huge benefit. But it, it is a feature that we have that allows you then to um, assign it to a specific device where you maybe can't run the IR wire to it. And then it's touchscreen, it's fully backlit. It actually has haptic feedback that we use for certain scenarios, like the home control buttons. Um, it has a tilt sensor, so as soon as you pick it up, it lights up. Um, the battery is rechargeable. It can be replaced. Uh, we've had, again, in, since the launch of the Harmony Pro, which is, you know, uh, they, they carry the same type of battery, I um, have not replaced one battery for an installer at, at this point. And so we, it's very low uh, escalations when it comes to replacing batteries. So, you know, we had to very significantly make sure that these batteries are, are tested properly. And again, if that battery goes in two years, we're going to replace it under warranty anyways. And if not, it can be replaced. Um, it has a help feature. And then the home control buttons we'll talk about a little bit more too. Is, is again, a huge benefit of simplifying home control. And then on the Pro 2400, it has a very cool feature, which I'll show in a second. And that's basically putting your business card on the remote. Now you're only going to get that feature if you are using the Pro portal. 
And then um, there is all kinds of advanced uh, remote features. Now, just because of uh, the sake of time, uh, I'm going to have to kind of race through this. I do apologize um, about kind of shorten this up. Again, uh, this webinar will be recorded as well. Now, the um, contact info, I just wanted to briefly show. So if the customer hits the menu, they have now contact installer, and it shows the installer right there on the remote. And again, a lot of these products, when you're setting it up without the portal, again, what we've done with the Pro 2400, and we're going to roll this out to the Pro as well, we make sure that these tutorials are not listed. Again, you don't need these tutorials. You are the tutorial. You're going to educate the customer. So we don't want you, you know, this is quite annoying for an installer having to disable that. So we're going to make sure that moving forward, we're actually not even putting that on the remote. Then, of course, that remote has a touch color LCD screen. It has the favorites. Not only can you launch the favorite while you're in Watch TV, you can actually click ESPN. It's going to automatically turn on Watch TV. And of course, we have favorites for Sonos and, and Roku. Just again, a very quick glance. Again, uh, we're racing a little bit through this. I might uh, eventually, through the Pro Portal, I'm going to upload a slide deck so in installers can actually download it themselves. Uh, so very quickly, what's great with Sonos, not only do we control Sonos, but we can actually group them. And when a customer is listening to Sonos, they can group them right from the remote, or you can do very cool things like party mode, where you just select that activity. We're going to automatically group all the speakers and set them to 90% or 80. Or maybe with dinner time, we just group two speakers and set it to a nice 20%, so you have a little bit ambiance music. Again, these are great advanced programming features that Harmony supports, and you can build that macro, again, two minutes. And of course, you can tie in the lights to the activity, so dinner time can kind of dim the lights, but you can also control the lights right here from the remote, or your shades, or your locks, or an Echo B thermostat. And then very quickly, home control buttons. What's great about this is sometimes you just want to quickly turn on one light or turn on all the lights in the kitchen or the living room or turn off every single light by your nightstand you can assign these they're just like you know you have those pico remotes you can actually just say you know the top bu button is just going to do a light scene like it's going to just automatically turn off all the lights by long pressing it in the living room and you give it a short press and it turns all the lights back on in the living room very easy, and now even the babysitter or grandma can operate the, the smart lights without needing an app or voice or anything. Again, all these uh, options are great, but if you have guests, this is another great feature. And of course, the app is also tied in not just for setting up, so you want to set everything up on the app. The Pro 2400 um, is designed to be set up on your Android or iOS device. Now, we show a phone. You can, of course, use a tablet, and that, that's what we usually recommend. So you have a little bit larger real estate. The app is free for the customer. They can connect to it. The first time they need to connect to it on their Wi-Fi, they don't need a password. They can just connect as long as they have access to the local Wi-Fi. Once that's done, they can actually leave the house and control it anywhere. So maybe they're in the car, they want to turn on ESPN before they get home so they don't miss the second period. Again, they can launch that anywhere. Or maybe they want to make sure it turns off so they can tell their t kids to uh, you know, do homework instead of watching TV. So you give that you know, out of home control. And of course, the voice integration, you can turn on activities, pause, play. Again, this, all this experience can be, be found online as well. It's a great way to just hide in just to quickly say, oh, turn off TV or turn on Apple TV and so forth. Now, the one important thing is what we see, it's, it's not designed to grab one hub and tie in all the remotes. They are designed per room. So, and again, that provides you also an opportunity to have these kind of systems semi-siloed, which is just, you know, making it a little bit easier to use and each remote belongs to a room. So no room is left without a remote, but you can take that remote to another room and change the Sonos. Again, all of them, all of them can uh, control the Sonos and uh, the lighting, you know, for raw to select. And then with the app, you can switch between different rooms. So it is a single room entertainment control, but when it comes to audio and lighting, it's, it's definitely um, a multi-room solution there. And um, again, the app actually allows you to switch between rooms. So that's it kind of how it kind of is broken down. So you're getting, again, this, there's a lot of value there. 
Uh, talking about the pro portal, I haven't brought it up yet. We're unfortunately very short of time. I'm going to just show, spend literally two minutes on the pro portal and show you where to register. But the pro portal, again, to some of you who have been installing Harmony, these pages are very familiar and these pages shouldn't even be presented to an installer. So what we've done is we've removed all these testing pages during the initial setup. And again, it makes for an even faster setup. So when you do it through the pro portal, you add it, your client through the pro portal, we can identify you as an installer and we can avoid adding all these additional training wheels. So what I'm gonna quickly do is see if I can bring up the pro portal. So what I recommend is, I'm just gonna minimize this here. What I recommend is for those who don't have a pro portal account, after this webinar, I'll be activating any account that comes in. It's pro.myharmony.com. You request an account right here, you fill everything in, and I will be approving it today. So this is a kind of a highlight of the portal. Now, I can't stress enough, I'm showing this on a computer, but again, when you're doing your installations, and eventually we'll, we will be making a pro app, we're just not there yet, you want to open the site on your mobile device. And then from there, the journey is you click on clients. You can see all my clients are here. You add a new client and that's gonna launch the Harmony app. So of course you need to download the Harmony app, but never start with the Harmony app. Always start with the portal and add the client. And then what's great too is you can do remote control. So if your client calls two months later, they decided to add ESPN3, you can connect to the hub. Again, as you can see, I need a mobile device here. So you connect to the hub and then you can actually add that favorite and it will automatically push a sync. Now, I wish I had more time, but we do have a recorded webinar on the portal. So you can see here, there's webinar videos posted here. Now, before you click on that, you need to tie into the e-learning platform. There's all kinds of courses and videos, again, something I highly recommend. This is a full end-to-end -end setup that actually walks you through installing a Harmony remote. So it's again, great for a new installer as well. Um, again, we are unfortunately out of time. That's just what happens in an hour. There was a lot of ground to cover. Um, just wanted to leave you with the value proposition of the five, you know, the MSRP of 549 for the Pro 2400 up to 100 feet range dedicated six IR ports that are 3.5 ethernet with PoE and PoE plus, now remove the antenna um, on remote IR control and the simplified home control buttons. Not to mention that the setup, which is another big value uh, to it, is just simple, easy, and fast. So allowing you to kind of install in a remote in less than half an hour. No one wants to spend three hours building a, you know, a remote config when you have everything else uh, in, in the house to take care of. So. With that, um, useful links, again, I will be probably sharing this in the pro portal, but they can all be found there as well. Questions? Mike, Mike if you send that to me, I'll share it out to everyone. As, you know, Perfect. Yeah, uh, let's wrap do that. After we're done. Okay, as well as um, I'll ask you to, to compile that workflow that you just mentioned about don't start with the app, start with this. So we'll yeah. do create like a five-step or six-step workflow. You basically yeah. what you helped me with to get mine going. So, yeah, all right. Uh, some well, questions uh, here. Yeah, good. Uh, good so, oh, you know what, Thomas asked the easiest question yet. What is the Pro Harmony site again? There it is, right there. Yeah, great. It's pro.myharmony.com, and you just request an account, and I'll be approving it. Now, Rick, uh, to your point, I've actually created a great article here. It's not just great because I've created okay. it. It's actually a great <laughs> article because I really want to take the installer through a journey. So this is exactly what you're asking. So this is the best practices to get the best out of your Harmony installs and to remove some of the, mis the accidental mistakes that some installers are, are taking because you know, I'm trying to teach distributors now, any new installer should start with a pro portal and take a course and kind of, you know, read these articles. But again, some of you have been doing it for a while. This covers everything. And not just that, all kinds of like, I've created an article on remote optimizations, like um, putting on a screen lock so that when the cat jumps on the couch, it's not gonna turn uh, up the projector and the projector screen and all that. So. This is really, this is a great article that kind of covers everything. So I'll, I'll share that with you, uh, Rick, as well. So, okay. yeah, thanks. great questions. Okay. What else? Um, you 
Joseph says that he bought the 2400 and there wasn't a lot of documentation when he first bought it. Yeah. And um, he he sees it appearing as being connected with Wi-Fi and the hardwired Ethernet port. Um, he wants sounds like he wants to take it off his uh, Wi-Fi. Um, but what what should he do specifically in the app or in the programming environment? to specify uh, which connection to use. So Ethernet is always prioritized over Wi-Fi. It's, it, it's, a, it's a really good question. So um, if you're plugging in by Ethernet, we're going to use Ethernet. Now that being said, you can actually um, add Wi-Fi as a fallback. We do support that. Um, if he has done that, there, at, this way, at this point, we don't have um, an option to turn that off without um, resetting the config, okay. uh, resetting the hub. Um, if he wants to do that, he can contact me. Um, but it doesn't really do harm because we're ignoring the Wi-Fi if Ethernet is connected. So okay. for instance, this hub, this Pro 2400 here is connected to Ethernet. And just so the rest of the audience understands, I can go here under Harmony setup, and I can then add Wi-Fi to it. In this case, it's not configured. I can configure it as a fallback. I did not do that out of the box. So he must have most likely done that. Again, Rick, feel free to, he's okay, got my sure. email. We can give me, we can jump on a call on that as well. Um, so good question. What else okay, we got? Perfect. Okay, so uh, another database question, uh, Radio RAT2 slash RAT2 select slash Caseta. Uh, will these devices be brought in for IP control? So, yeah, good, uh, good multi-question there. So, what we support for Lutron right now, we don't. We everything is controlled through an API, so it's it is IP. So, what we support is raw to select and Caseda. We do not have an integration yet for raw to. That that it's a little bit higher up the pyramid. Um, have we had um, you know requests? Definitely. We just need to see how big of a demand that is because we do see a lot of installers using you know raw to select as well. So again, an integration uh, takes time and effort and and resources and at the end of the day, it's money, right? So, but it's it's something if we this is a part of when we uh, roll out a survey that I plan at the end of the year. So anyone who has a pro portal, I'm gonna email them a survey. Again, not a reason to sign up and post that. So that way you can share your top five. And that, that's what I really wanna start uh, looking at. So good question, what else we got? Okay, speaking of the portal, Samuel asks, is the installer portal just for setup of uh, the Pro and the 2400, or yep. our Elites and other Harmony products also be able to be set up on the Pro? Great question, and again, because we raced through that, I didn't specify. Any remote that has been from kind of 2010 and up, so no Harmony 880 or 1100, but a 650 from 2010 will work, or a Harmony 1, as long as it's been set up on the My Harmony software, not on our legacy platform, which is like a member web software. You can definitely add uh, those remotes to the portal as well. Good question. Okay, perfect, okay. Um, Chris is asking about software to set up on a PC, or is it only an app-based setup? I can answer that one, because I set mine up on my laptop. No, not the Pro 2400, Rick. So yeah, that's a very good question. I, I want to oh. emphasize on that. So we are transitioning to mobile because we, we can do a lot more with mobile. If you look at products like Sonos or, or doing a, a, you know, a thermostat or um, Lutron RAW 2, Caseda RAW 2 Select, a lot of these products are mobile only. And we want to kind of focus on one experience where we're now even focusing on kind of doing a specific dealer flow. When we do uh, it on the computer, that's going to take a lot more resources. Now, we, we might change that later, but right now we want to focus on that direction using that mobile experience. The other benefit is it allows you to plug in the hub in the rack or the AV setup and actually do the setup as things are already powered on. So we can actually build a macro and you'll see it kind of fire off the command. So um, the app also has home control integration, which the desktop software doesn't have. Now, I know some installers may say, well, I want a bigger screen. Again, we support it on a tablet. We have 
you know, Logitech makes keyboards that you can tie into a tablet. So there is definitely options there. Now the Pro Portal, you can view it on a web browser on a computer. It's just the setup we wanted you to use on a mobile device. Okay, all right. So, sorry, Chris, yeah, you have to grab your tablet. Um, let me see here. Um, will we be able to choose between IR and IP drivers when we add a device to the system? So, if you don't want to set up the Sony TV through um, IP, you can skip it. It's right now, you can't switch it um, afterwards. That's something we do want to roll out eventually, but right now, it's during the initial setup. If you've done IP and you do want to do IR, you would have to remove the device and then say, I want IR by skipping the IP parent process. Okay, perfect. All right. Um... Len has a follow-up question on the favorites pages for channel icons. So he said, did I hear correctly that the favorites page is not compatible with cord cutters who use uh, services like YouTube TV? Yeah, it's not, no, because th those, those services don't have a concept of channel numbers. No one in the industry has figured this out and people aren't unfortunately not complaining hard enough. Like if you look at, uh, Apple TV or Roku, there is no numerics. There is no concept of pushing a specific channel. So there is there is no way of, of launching a specific okay. channel on those devices. That's unfortunately the design, and that's not something on our end. That's just how that industry right now is tailoring to that. It would be amazing if they would actually implement a numeric setup, but they, they don't right now. Okay. So I have a follow-up question about favorites. Mm -hmm. um, if favorites, if um, let's say some of the channels are on um, a certain device, like earlier you mentioned like Cody, I don't want to talk too much about Cody because it's not really something That's that fine. I think pros, pros support too much. But let's say you've got channels that are on uh, certain devices and then you've got other favorites that are on like say an off-air tuner that you've got like a TiVo OTA or something like that. Yeah. Can a favorites also select an input or also select a different device no, so that also has tuners in yeah it. let me break that down there is a, there is a, a somewhat of a solution so the favorites are are done um for the primary device the, the we don't support multi favorites for channel tuning devices like we support you can have favorites for sonos and roku and tv now a lot of times what installers do for that secondary device the over the air or something a lot of times it's about five to 10 favorites that are really important. In that scenario, you can just create a macro. You can actually on the LCD screen, just call it CNN and send 10.1, for instance, as the macro. The only thing is it won't okay. have an icon. Yep. So that's, that that's one uh, way around it, yeah. Okay, um, let me see. Um, how many emitters come in the box, Sean is asking. Uh, so there's uh, three single head IR emitters and they come with their own uh, 3M double-sided tape kind of IR boots, okay. They're IR rubber boots that you stick on. You can even cut them uh, to smaller sizes. And then nice. one male-to-male okay. -male stereo jack. Okay, and then his follow-up question is, um, is there strength adjustment on the emitters? No, we are using the five volts. Outputs. It's, it's yeah. using five volt and it self-regulates. We, we really don't get any complaints with a weak signal or anything at, at this point. Yeah. I've yet to get that call. Okay. Now, uh, what I did forget to mention when I did the unboxing to the new audience, the hub itself also has six IR blasters outside of it. So it just blasts two forward, two up, and two at a 45 degree uh, angle. Okay, that's a good point. All right, so Sean's asking an additional question here. Um, does the remote send the IP controls directly to the Wi-Fi network, or does it communicate via RF to the base, and then the base uh, communicates the IP commands? Uh, the second, uh, he, he gave himself uh, the answer, the second one. Again, we want everything yeah. to be done to the hub because the hub is plugged in. The hub is always getting power. You do that on the remote, it's just going to drain juice. The remote yeah. is just telling the hub what to do. Um, and just like Alexa or Google is going to tell the hub what to do or the mobile app, the, the brain is really the hub. So, but the hub has two-way feedback with the remote through the proprietary RF uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and the um, there's a competing platform out there that uses Wi-Fi from the remote, and there's yeah. a wake, 
wake timing issues sometimes. So it's yeah, another point that, that we got. And yeah, the other complaint that we have is that it doesn't have the ability at all to do point and shoot IR. Yeah. And like I was sharing with you offline uh, yesterday or the day before when we spoke, you know, I've got a 160 pound or whatever, 100 and some odd pound television, and I'm not taking that thing off the wall. So I, I <laughs> control it with point and shoot to turn it on yeah. and off when I changed uh, remotes. So, you know, yeah. I'm not about to uh, take the thing down off the wall just so I can, you know, plug a, uh, a yeah, better cord I mean, in the back of it. We, we looked at Wi-Fi for many years, but the world is not completely ready for that. Until everyone has a also perfect Wi-Fi environment, things are getting better, but it's not every house has that. Not every, now I always encourage installers, you know, you are also the network guy, you're the IT guy, and that just brings more business. But sometimes the budget takes place as well, right? So be, becoming reliable, on, rely, uh, having that reliability on the Wi-Fi network is, we feel, still a drawback because there's just too many dead spots. Um, and not to mention also, you know, the power consumption still on that as well. Yeah. And, the, and the timing. I mean, when you pick yeah. it up, it's got a tilt sensor in it. It has to wake up. And for the Harmony platform, all it's doing is turning the, turn the backlighting on and turning the LCD yeah. on. For the other platform, yeah. it's trying to all of a sudden, you know, generate a handshake with a, um, yeah. either, you know, Bluetooth or a Zigbee or a, in, th in that case, Wi-Fi. And that's... Yeah. You know, it takes sometimes two seconds to negotiate. If a guy just wants to pick it up and hit volume down to answer the phone or pick it up and change the channel because, you know, cars for kids or some horrible commercial just came out and he doesn't want to wait. That person does no, not want to wait. No, exactly. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, oh, my, uh, my hat's off. I see a lot of requests for a portal accounts. Uh, I'll, I'll be busy. This is good. All right. F fantastic. All right. Um, any updates on Nest integration? Question coming from Igor. Great, painful question. Um, no, this, this, this is on Nest. They killed the works with Nest. Um, they grabbed a couple key select partners that have to redevelop the whole, <laughs> the whole enchilada, basically. And it's something we see, again, we're, we're entertainment control first. And, and what we see the biggest value when it comes to home control um, and, and tying home control into entertainment is lighting. That's where we provide the biggest value proposition. So we just never saw a huge lift in tying the remote to the thermostat. A lot of times that's more done through voice um, or the app. So that's for we, we want to allocate resources more on, for instance, more IP control and such. So I, I don't foresee um, Nest uh, coming anytime soon when it comes to a thermostat or protect so hopefully that i'm trying to be as transparent as possible but that's where sure. we see it you know we want to do the entertainment and we want to dim the lights with netflix and turn them back on that we see a lot more connections there you know we have 2.5 million smart bulbs connected to our hubs now i'm not gonna you know nest uh, thermostats where we're not looking at anything near those numbers you know you're looking at the hundreds of thousands so it's, it's in less of a use case so okay perfect Good all question. right so juan has asked if i applied for my pro account two days ago would i be able to get an account ready today so did He's you just say you're, you're lighting this up right now right what, what, is, what is his name juan one. See, I am a strong believer. You have no, but you can get yes. And if you don't ask, you're not going to get anything. So, <laughs> okay. um, so I will make sure. I, I don't see one in the list. Is it you one? said two days ago. It should have already been approved. If he doesn't oh, have the okay. email, okay. look for, so very important, look for welcome.logitech.com. And if he doesn't okay. have it, have him reach out to me because I've already approved that yesterday. Nice. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, and then to set up a new customer, do we need the customer's email address? Yeah. So the reason why there's a couple of things, right? In in the, a couple of years ago, I could do a reset password for an installer and name it Harmony. With Facebook and China and Russia, we are in a different world. You cannot do that. No company is allowed to just reset a client's account for security. Also, we tie into smart locks as well, right? So. What happens is it is critical that you use a client's email um, because if we ever do a password reset, now very important, what the benefit with the pro portal, you don't even have to create a password. We encrypt the password, customer doesn't actually need it, it's, it's hidden in our system, encrypted and, and never exposed, unless the customer wants access to the settings, 
they can do a password reset, which you can do on pro.myharmony.com on the landing page. What it means is you don't need to manage passwords. As soon as that client is tied into your portal, you can access them. But that being said, for warranty, for, for all many, many reasons, it needs to be a legit email from the customer. Now I hear some installers, yes, my customer is 65 and he doesn't want to deal with the hassle. Create a Gmail for him and charge him a service fee. This is this is the world we live in. It's no different with Lutron or Sonos or other products. It's it's essential that you have a legit email to that customer. And I think if you explain that to the customer, it's keeping their security in mind. They they would definitely understand. Okay, so we've got an advanced use question from Tom. He wants to know what about a video system with uh, two different displays, i.e. A uh, flat panel as well as a projector with a screen for uh, mm -hmm. larger events. So like a day-to-day yeah, -day watching the TV, and yeah. it's in the same – yeah, and then the screen comes down for, you know, fight night or golf tournaments or whatever. Yeah, and so there's a couple things Olympics. you can do. That, that's great, great question. And so there's a couple things. Sometimes you want to have them both on or not. You can add both to the activity or you can transition. If I hit watch TV, turn on the projector and turn off the TV. Or you can say, when I switch back and forth, keep them on. That, that's, again, that power setting that I mentioned. And that, that article is actually on the portal homepage as well. So those, those uh, setups we definitely support. We have that, the same thing in this room here. We have a projector and a TV. So, yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. And and just one add-on to that. This is where the portal is great, too. When you have these kind of more kind of advanced – system setups and you do want more advice again the for the dealer form i moderate is another great way to reach out to me where we can brainstorm okay this is the best way i recommend it um so all right good question okay perfect all right next question that pops up here um let me see if we have accounts that are sent up under the regular portal, can they be migrated to the pro portal or do we have to recreate these accounts and reprogram these remotes under the pro portal? The, so he's claiming the regular portal, the one from back 2008, so 11 years ago. Again, there is only one pro portal for all our oh. current Harmony remotes. Now, we had a portal for our legacy software, that Harmony 880s, 890s, and so forth. We're, we're talking products from 11 years where you really want to upgrade those customers to new remotes anyways. That legacy portal doesn't tie into this new portal because, quite frankly, there, there is, there is the, that's a lot of resources for, quite frankly, products that are 11 years old that don't have benefits of Bluetooth, IP, and so forth. Those customers, anytime I have an installer, well, what about my 880 customer? I'm like, well, he, you should really tell them to upgrade to the Pro 2400. There's tons of benefits. You know, Most people don't even hold on to their TV for three years or their car. Who's holding on to a remote for 11 years? Okay. All right. So, Joe, if you have further questions, uh, let's take that offline. Um, Tom's asking, um, will you be doing a webinar or do you have a webinar already recorded showing advanced setup like IR port routing, step-by-step uh, -step home, home automation pairing, et cetera? So I, I do plan uh, on, on doing some, and, and it, this is something, again, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy doing the webinars with, with Rick, and uh, he does a great job facilitating this for, you know, the whole – Snap AV family, Volutone, Allnet, uh, MRI. It's, it's great to kind of have this whole collective group together. So we can definitely plan that out, Rick, because I'm, I'm also planning this out probably for, um, I think, another distributor. Uh, it's definitely something people are asking for. So it's definitely something I want to do, um, most likely see if we can do something perhaps uh, later in November. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, again, it does – you have to kind of see how it will fit in, in the calendar of our distributors. So don't take my word okay. on that yet. And, um, so. <laughs> and we're happy to, even if we can't include it on our network, we're happy to promote it to the audience. So either Perfect. Perfect. if you're working, yeah, with, working with me for the, for the district, for the distributors or working with Andy for the, for Stamp yeah. AV, the mothership, we're happy to uh, support those and share them with our training audiences. Yeah, no, that, that sounds good. So we'll get back to the drawing table. Uh, on that question, I really recommend to take the 
e-learning course, there is a pro uh, Harmony Pro new user setup, and that's tying it into into Lutron, into Sonos, a lot of this kind of advanced programming um, as well. So, but yeah, stay tuned uh, for that. Okay. All right. Chris asked about nine times about his Pro Portal, and then he left. Uh, oh. I don't know if you're still here, Chris. Be patient. He's lighting everyone up, but he's also answering questions on a webinar. So just be patient. We'll follow up. You'll get you'll be lit up today. Um, all right. Uh, oh, Joe asked a follow-up question. He goes, Harmony Pro accounts that were made six months ago, meaning Harmony Pro remotes. Maybe yeah. I'm, I'm guessing, Joe, are you saying accounts or accounts that you did on the Pro app, and then now you want to include them on the – Pro yeah. portal, so you can remotely access them through your portal login. That's what my guess is. Yes, so that's, let's, let's yes. guess that's exactly question. what he was. That's exactly what he was asking. Oh, he wants so. to add clients. So again, this is because we were a little too short for time. I wanted to cover this. Great question. So I'm on the pro portal here, and basically, what all you need to do is basically click on import client and put in the client's email. And then once you do that, it's going to ask you to request permission from the customer, or if the customer gave you the the, email, uh, the password, you can enter that in. And then as soon as you do that, um, when you go back to the clients page, just hit refresh, and then it will uh, appear right here. As long okay, as perfect. you put in the password or the customer had, has hit the, the, the approve button. So. Okay, so... We got another question here. We're getting some questions about. Oh, here Brian's asking about dual emitters. He needs eight devices. The answer is yes, Brian. There's plenty of output for dual emitters. I got dual emitters on two of mine. Two of yeah, my Zentac has a really cool one with dual emitters, which works on ours as well. Oh, and I think what you mean is episode. <laughs> episode emitters. Okay. Oh, episode. Okay. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Howard wants to know um, how many hubs can we have installed in the same rack and controlling different devices throughout the house? Obviously, IR, we would just route the IR to the specific device, but in the case of IP, um, we're just importing IP, you know, static IP addresses, MAC addresses, et cetera, to well, say which good, device is on You don't have to remote. do any of that. No need. We, again, we don't want you to be a rocket scientist putting in an IP address and a MAC address. We discovered a device, and then you can add it through IP. And you can. we actually, um, under the info, show the friendly name and the IP address if need be. But you don't have to do that anything on your end. Great well, question. How difficult is it if a customer has, let's say, um, uh, four Sony TVs throughout the house, and let's say three of them have sound bars and one of them has got a receiver? So if they wanted to do four Harmony remotes to control those four areas, how difficult no would that system be to set up? It's not difficult at all. That's that's what I uh, basically set up in my dad's house. He has uh, three Harmony units. Um, I've also had one distributor, the reverse. They had three Sony TVs that I just tied into one remote. But again, we really want a remote for each room. That being said, the great question. You can add up to 15 remotes to one household. So that customer could have 15 Harmony remotes under that same email address. So, and uh, again, they can all, again, all of them can all tie into the Sonos. They can all tie into the Lutron, just like that, that image, right? As I mentioned here, um, this is kind of the visual. They all tie into that. And then the app can switch between the rooms, so. Okay. And then the thing that you and I talked about again off, this is offline, but I can share it if you'd like with people. Because so we had, did have some questions about the RF, uh, RF um, antenna. How many antennas can be used? And it's just one, correct? You just leave the one? Yeah, but you can extend it. It's, it's a coax uh, connection that you can extend it with. Fifth, yeah. Fifth, um, yeah. The 50 ohm. Yeah. yeah. So, and we got a very detailed um response from one of the engineers and Pike's hesitant to share it. Um, essentially, it, you can't do like a mile long extension yeah. just because of the loss in the cable. So 50 ohm cables are like, for those of you who've been in the field for a long time, it's what we used back in the day, like an RGB mini when we used to make our own component video cables. So it's the same problem we had with component video cables. You get 
past 20, 30, 40 feet, and it just starts to not work. So anyway, same thing happens here. So we want to use the lowest loss cable, and then we want to use SMA, male to female. Yeah, and, um, exactly. I'm, I'm going to do it at my house because I've got my base station in my basement, and I want to be able to use remote on the second floor. It currently works perfectly on the first floor, yeah. and it works fine on the second floor. I just I don't want to leave anything to chance because it's not like they're going to get it. These, yeah. It's not like these houses are going to have less RF products in them over time. So I want to make yeah. it as rugged and reliable as possible today, so that you know anything else. If the neighbor decides to go buy a Wi-Fi lawnmower, he doesn't blow up my, uh, <laughs> my <laughs> <laughs> so yeah whatever whatever they're going to add. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, Brad's asking a question about using toggle power. He's got a, uh, an older device that uh -huh. doesn't have discrete power, and he wants to know how to use how to set up uh, flags like. Um, so uh, yeah, that's the thinking that like an engineer. I, so th that's this comes back. This is our job. So you have to educate. Customers should not be using original remotes. We actually constantly track the state. Like it's, again, IR is not two way, but if you use the Harmony to control your devices, we know that that device is a power toggle. So we're gonna be very cautious with sending that command. So from an off state, we know, okay, we're gonna send it, we're gonna transition to another activity, we'll turn it off. So we keep track if we've turned the device on or off. We're not just sending that command. This is our smart state technology that we talked about in the past. Now, what's also important is if it gets out of sync because a two-year-old pressed the button, or a power outage happened, you want to educate the customer on the help button. So they hit the help on the top there. You can see the menu and the help. And we're going to ask, we're not, when you hit help, we're going to automatically blast everything with discrete clean power on commands or off if you hit help during off. If it's toggle, we're going to ask, is the cable box on? If the customer says no, then we send the power command. So there is a way to kind of for them to recover that sync state. So this is something that's good to educate the customer with as well. So hopefully that covers kind of your question. But trust me, you know, when I started, you know, I'm natively Dutch. That's where the accent comes from. I did a lot of support calls for the first two years uh, from the Netherlands and Europe doesn't, you know, this was back in 2005, there were most devices like these Philips TVs just had toggle, unfortunately. They were terrible when it came to their design, but it works, you know, we need to make that work. So as long as, again, the Harmony is used for everything, it's gonna work just fine with the toggles. But again, anytime we have discretes, we're gonna try to make sure that that works. So hopefully that, that kind of answers that question. All right. Apple TV, latest generation, can you do the joystick commands? We cannot. What we can do, however, um, is we, and uh, this is a nice thing about, again, the pro portal, the core benefit is managing clients, but there is, this is how I communicate with installers and how we, um, our, our team communicates latest releases, like we talked about the tip. So eventually we're gonna roll out a Bluetooth version for Apple TV, but it's already accessible for installers. I've been using this for a year. I've had many installers use it. We have over 10,000 customers using our Bluetooth profile. So if you click on this article, it shows you how to add the Bluetooth version. And, and the beauty of that is now you get that true home command, which is not on the IR profile. So you can do task switching, you can sleep, uh, hit, hit, turn it actually off in sleep mode. You can then also, of course, switch between users, which is a new update. And then I plan on, there is a form request about Apple TV. There is a way to build macros to launch apps as well. So you can kind of create a, a Netflix activity by launching a, a small macro. So stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, that's kind of our, our integration, so. Okay, perfect. So Brian, I hope that answers your Apple question as well. If you have additional uh, follow-up, just feel free to type it in the chat window. Um, okay, is there a sleep option for Apple TV? Follow-up Apple question. Yeah, so we the, with the Bluetooth version, there is, and we automatically put it to sleep when you hit the off button. So you can change that power behavior, but we're gonna send home 
and then hit OK after a second. That's kind of the, the way that that macro works. OK, perfect. Um, Matthew's asking a question about the RF between the remote and the hub. Um, since it's in 2.4, is there a way to um, is there a way to change the channel? If no, it, we do that. That's a very good question. But that's, as I mentioned, we optimize that. We are constantly scanning. Anytime we have a channel that's interfering, we're going to automatically scan to that. you got to keep in mind, you might be able to set it to a channel. You can do that with routers, but then tomorrow someone else moves in. You're going to go back to the location and change that again. There's a reason why we've designed it this way. It needs to be kind of dummy proof and reliable so we're we're constantly monitoring if we're on the right channel okay and is it is it in the wi-fi spectrum or is it in the bluetooth spectrum at 2.4 or is it in a whole different area in 2.4 it, it's the it's in the, the yeah the, um, the it, it's it's in the rf spectrum of the 2.4 from what i've been told okay, okay yeah. cool all right um let me All right, Brad's got a question here. Um, can I delete the pre-programmed power command in an activity so that I can use a function command to power the device more reliably? So that's a great question. First of all, um, the activity is, again, this goes in the advanced webinar to explain better to installers um, how it works. The activity is just telling the device what to do. So you would you won't change anything power-wise on an activity because you may have two activities with that device, right? It applies to the device. So you would be changing um, the behavior of the device. I'm just going to see if I can bring up my configuration. Um, okay, there we go. So you can change the power settings on the device to a different command. So maybe you want to power on the Yamaha with an input, for instance. So you would go to the device and change the attributes on the device side. So this is an AVR. There's, as you can see, there are two different zones. And, and here you would change not just the power, how you're powering it, but you could change the commands. So in the activity, we kind of, we block you from changing power commands because it belongs to the device setting, not the activity setting, if that makes sense. Okay. We got a follow-up question about the PC software, and I'm positive that I set mine up on PC. No, you can, but not for the when Pro 2400. Talk, and well, that's, the what 20... you that's what you sent me, it was a 2400, but here's the yeah, thing. But when we I was talking to you yesterday, it. And mm -hmm. I said that mine doesn't work, and I or it does, it's not that it doesn't work, but I have my uh, my activities weren't set up correctly. And you said, you know, and I said I just kind of you know admitted, hey, I'm not a Harmony expert. Yeah. I've only done one ever, and um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, that's, that's probably why because I yeah, I'll explain. I, I, did it on the, uh, I started it on the mm -hmm. PC. Yeah, so unfortunately, right now, we wanted to release the product uh, during Cydia, and a hard call had to be made and, uh, made, and I'll be very transparent on that. Uh, we released without blocking it, unfortunately. It is going to get blocked. So yes, you can set it up, but you'll see it's the wrong picture. It doesn't have all the setup features, so we will be blocking that shortly. And so... So okay, it is, so, again, a mobile focus. Again, the mobile just provides a lot more advanced programming. And we're not the only ones taking that transition, right? This is, um, you see it with a lot of products in the industry. There's yeah. a lot of products that you can set Lutron, up on a laptop, quite frankly. Lutron did it with uh, Ratu Select. Yeah. So yeah. even so, even within our building, we've got products that are doing that, that are traditionally from the laptop programming channel. I, I get okay, that. I, I understand that. All right. Um, let me see. Oh, and Chris, I approved your dealer account, so. Uh, he's, I think he's long gone. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but thanks for updating. Uh, let me see. For iPad, is there a programming page designed for the iPad OS and not an, an X2 iOS version for a mobile? Also, is iPad OS, is there a usable remote interface for the iPad OS that's separate from the mobile OS? So this is an iPad mini that I'm showing right now. I'm not fully understanding the question. You can't, we can't control a tablet with a remote. There is, there, that's uh, no, just. I think, uh, I'm not going to speak for him, but 
So in some devices, the the when you add an app to an iPad, it just yeah. looks like a very large version of the mobile phone app. No, this is scaled. As you can see okay. here, the, it, it is scaled. Uh, you know, to to an i. You know, make sure that it, it it looks the resolution, everything looks fine. And most importantly, the app, the control app, is slightly different layout than on the mobile. This is this is the iPad version that you know you're looking at here now. So. So the answer is yes, this is a iPad version that I'm showing you right now, and that, that's optimized for, for the iPad and will adapt to the resolution. Okay, so Joe has a follow-up question on the multiple rooms, multiple remotes. Mm -hmm. uh, question, is there a way to put the room name on the remote so it's easy to determine which yeah, remote is which remote? It's a great ask. It's, it's on my list. Great uh, five bonus points for that. Right now, there's a couple of things we got at CDL. One, it's great that you can um switch between rooms but the fact that we call it switch hubs and that it needs to be three steps is something we eventually want to make more of a room interface on the app at least for um the pro channel as you can see here um right now on the remote you cannot and that's something i i do feel we need to eventually push forward so that way if the remotes get swapped from one room to the other they can actually figure that out again i'm i uh just did a whole bunch of trainings and expos uh, where, again, I heard a lot of this feedback and this is something that will go in my presentation report uh, for next week to kind of the stakeholders. So, great question. Okay, perfect. All right, <clears throat> let's keep going. Yeah, we definitely have a few questions. Thank you everyone um, for uh, staying with us. We still have questions. If your question's been asked, you're, you're you can drop off. We'll be happy to still send the follow-up uh, stuff to you. Um, sorry for the drop background noise. I didn't shut the door behind me. But yeah, great. Uh, we're setting maybe a new record for you, uh, Rick. <laughs> so that's uh, we're we're here to answer your questions. That's you know another very important piece of the webinars. Okay, Tom says, thank you for the three and a half millimeter jacks. Tom, this has been an ask for, from our side for a long time. Ah, uh, excellent. Selling, selling emitters and know, our emitters. It's, it's about jacks. time, yeah. Yeah, you need to send me some sample, Rick, so I can stop talking about Zantac. <laughs> and play oh, with I those see how that works. We'll figure it out. <laughs> so, though, um, I'm sure we're all compatible, but uh, for, for demoing, uh, we'll definitely make sure we'll, uh, we'll show those too. Great. All right. So Sean's asking a question about Bluetooth here. So since we're doing programming via, via mobile device, does the programming have to take place with the Wi-Fi paired to the base, or can we use the Bluetooth to uh, program the, the product before we? Um, it's a good do question. The build? And I'm guessing like maybe a pre-build, like you do on a bench bench test before you take the product out, maybe. So there's yeah, there's definitely like three answers and three different questions in one. First of all, why do we need Bluetooth? A, a couple of things. Before we establish the Wi-Fi connection, we're gonna need Bluetooth regardless to communicate to the hub. Now you may say, well, what if I use Ethernet? Technically, then yes, you don't need Bluetooth. Why do we need Bluetooth? It's a security handshake. You know, you've heard all these news like they hacked a you know jeep cherokee car there's there's all these hackers constantly going after manufacturers so we ourselves had to take some secure steps to make sure no one can impersonate a fake installer or client so bluetooth is there for a security handshake where we pass on a specific token and the Wi-Fi um, is required to get the latest from our database. Now, if you are doing a cottage where there is no internet, you can pre-configure um, the remote. And again, the remote will work without network connection. Again, it's using the proprietary RF technology. It's just gonna be offline, so you're not gonna remotely service your client. You're gonna have to roll that truck to that cottage. But you can definitely use it without internet, but setup requires internet. We don't want you to, we're not gonna send you a CD with some outdated data. We're improving the data every day. And a lot of these devices also require internet, like Sonos and Lutron and APIs and so forth. So there's a huge benefit to having that. 
Um, I see installers sometimes they want to set it up in the shop. I understand that. You can do that, but you don't want to do that if you're introducing devices such as um, Roku or Sonos. You want to do that on the job. Now, there is a nice happy medium if you have a larger company or you kind of have a um, installer that's not really trained to do a full programming. Well, have the installer just do a basic setup and then some an office admin can remotely finish the setup through the pro portal, right? So there is there is also a lot of these happy mediums as well, where you can you can finish the programming later, or you can do a basic config first. So hopefully that that kind of answers those three questions in one. Very thorough. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Well, I, since I got my kind of title on that, which we just had to come up with something, I better hold on to that uh, that senior role. <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay. That question is from Chris. He's not on anymore. So I'll, I'll ask Chris's question. You can choose to answer it. So he's, again, asking about Samsung. You said that Samsung is still on the roadmap, correct? For IP yeah, it's, all, it's, all, it's in my top five, but I, okay. unfortunately on webinars, we can't really discuss roadmap if, when, and why. I understand the importance. I'm going to keep hitting that drum, Samsung, and then secondary LG. Okay, perfect. All right, so Igor is asking, currently on Google Home, you can add only one Harmony Hub. Can you add multiple Harmony Hubs on the same Google Smart Home account? Not at this point, but I'm going to give you a workaround. And then again, this is something we we've have heard before, but this is again a resource piece, and it's also there is a lot of dependency on on Roku, on Google, and uh, on uh, Amazon when we start venturing into that. Um, so at this point, we we don't support multiple rooms. But let me tell you, and this is what I've done in the past, um, and you can almost get almost everything out of that. There is a service called You Know Me that also uses our Harmony API um, and works with Google or Alexa. And they support multiple Harmony hubs that you can then tie into Google um, or Alexa. The only thing is you're not going to get all the favorite channels, um, but you can turn on activities and, and turn them off. And again, the workaround sometimes is you can create separate activities for ESPN, like a second activity for ESPN, and then they can launch that with you know me. The critical piece I would suggest is to name the TV, um, sorry, the hubs based on, on the location and go through that uh, as well. Um, send me an email. I might still have some documentation. It's a raw draft, but I'm more than happy to share that uh, with you as well to kind of get you kind of through uh, uh, that direction if you want to try that out, of course. So. Okay, so yeah, Igor, grab uh, Pike's email off the screen. Nice. Okay. Let me see. We went through a lot of questions. I know. Thank it's, you, everyone, uh, it's, for it's, a it's, bunch it's, it's of questions good. today. We we have great engagement today. This is this may be one of our best webinars in terms of engagement. Yeah, no, I love oh, to see half, that. Half, half of the great. questions were from Chris, who's not on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he got it. He got it out of the system, so that's that's yeah. good. And uh, yeah. we used to set up with the Pro Portal, uh, so I will make sure that uh, oh. I will get to work. I found one uh, up top. Sorry, Sean, for not getting to your question earlier. Um, Apple TV and Comcast you have a microphone function, and uh, the TiVo does as well. Um, is there any? Um, is that something that they could do in the future? Um, not, not yet. Definitely, yeah, not with the same hardware. It would definitely be a whole new piece, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, okay. uh, yeah, there's not a microphone in that piece. No, but, once we sell a ton of Pro 24s, uh, <laughs> 400s, we'll, uh, we might get to that. Uh, I, I agree. That would be a nice next step for sure. But in the interim, we've got integration with Google Home and uh, Amazon Alexa. Alexa. Yeah. So we do have we do have a VUI. We just don't have a push to talk VUI like the yeah. Xfinity and the uh, Apple. Okay. Exactly. Hmm. Okay. I'm 
kind of just scrolling down through here. Yeah. Oh, here's the here's the previous question from Brad. So Brad asked two questions about the the toggle device. So I see your early question here. Um, he wants the customer would like to verify that the unit powered down without going to the rack at the lower level. The unit indicates power down with a splash screen. I'd like to delay the power off command of the TV so the customer can verify that the switch powered down on screen before the screen gets turned off. Is there a way to adjust the uh, the sequence of commands in a macro to facilitate uh, yeah. what Brad's asking? It is a it can be done. It's a bit trial and error. You need to add a delay to the power setting um, for the TV. So you send, so the, most likely the TV is still discrete and he wants the TV to be powered on a little bit later. So you can't wedge that in the activity yet. That's something, this is much further down. Again, when it comes to priority, I'd rather do IP before this, but I, I feel it's, it's an ask. But what he can do, and again, you can email me too, I can break down those steps is what I would do, so if the TV has discrete on the power off, before power off, you can go in the settings and add like three second delay. And then you also go into the activity and make sure that the TV's powered off last in that sequence. So, so there is a way, um, there is a bit of a threshold, so um, to, to see, but it definitely there, there is ways of doing that. So feel free to reach out to me and I, I can send you the steps. I might not have those steps until next week because I'm uh, out of the office Thursday and Friday, but I'll definitely get to your, uh, your emails. Okay. All right. So Dirk asked a question about, um, can we buy the hub by itself for iPad slash iPhone users to create a secondary area? And then I'll throw in our two cents. So this is the, we have this application fairly often with like an uh, iPort or Luxport frame where there's yeah. a uh, a tablet mounted to the wall or mounted on a little pedestal and it's used kind of like in the way that yeah. dealers 10, 15 years ago would have done like a big giant AMX or a big giant Crestron or a big giant C4. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. they're kind of migrated now toward using yeah. a lot of iOS devices and kind of these middle yeah. middle jobs, middle yeah. middle level jobs. Okay, so can he just buy just the hub and do just that? Uh, not, not yet. Once we see a lot of demand, what you can do it now, it sounds silly. What I would do right now, it's just not available, but you sell them the same same unit and you don't give them the remote. And then I, uh, you can actually um, keep that remote because this doesn't happen often, but I've done this a couple of times. I've already replaced three remotes that I should not have replaced, but they were eaten by a dog. Um, so it could be one of your spare units. So wow. okay. again, everything can be operated with, with, uh, with, you know, the hub. So the remote doesn't have to be present because it gets get stolen. But at, at this point, it would be a whole new SKU. Um, and, and until we see a lot of demand at this point, we, we just haven't designed a, a separate SKU for that. Okay, perfect. All right. I think we've gone through everything. Excellent. Well, that's a uh, was a great great session. Uh, Fifty-three minutes over. Yeah, that's uh, all right. That's good. So I'll uh, make sure uh, Rick will get get the slide deck out as well, so that he can share it uh, sure. with the group. And yeah, then, I'll share uh, all the resource pages. I'll absolutely share and the um, uh, the instructions on how to get it to Pro Portal. And then you've got all of your uh, a lot of your training tips and tricks and things like that on as articles on either on the, the forum portal, or yeah. on the pro portal directly exactly in the, in the e-learning okay. platform and then uh we'll, we'll circle back on the you know advanced settings webinar there's definitely okay. uh, demand for that so good stuff okay. i want to thank and then everyone i need to i need to talk to you about migrating my my build from the pc software over to uh tablet so i can start tinkering with my programming yeah anything yeah. i well, have to do uh, on that yeah, you want, let's just jump on a call after this uh, quickly, if, if that works. Okay, that's fine. All right, we'll do it. Well, maybe maybe tomorrow or Friday. We, uh, we're, uh, I think I'm neglecting the, uh, the branch here. So oh, <laughs> let's, yeah. let, let's, let's do branch it. Uh, better. Let's, we'll do it next week. I'm out of the office. So sounds good, Rick. Okay, perfect. All right.
Perfect. So everyone, thank you for your time today. Thanks for joining us. Uh, this session will be uh, loaded up on the uh, AllNet YouTube channel in five to seven days. So if there's anyone from your team who was not able to visit, the, not able to join us for the live call today, um, you can have them uh, review the session remotely uh, on the uh, AllNet YouTube channel. So I want to thank everyone again for joining us today. And Pike, very special thanks to you for putting on a great presentation for us today. Right. Thank you. It was my pleasure and really enjoyed all the questions and, um, you know, sharing our uh, new product launch. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. Okay. All right. We're going to go ahead and end the webinar now. Thanks.